Okay, hi. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> we got a lot of big projects coming up this winter. Um, we're, we have a snowstorm right now, so we are gonna work on the inside of the shop and if you guessed it, it's gonna be the processing kitchen. So we are going to put sheetrock up and then I'm hoping that I can take over with mud and taping and get it prime and painted. All of our materials for the cabinets are out there in the middle of the shop and we're kind of, the shop feels very crowded. We need to use up materials before we get onto any other projects and we need to purchase more materials to do the outside. So we kind of have to get our acting gear. There's not necessarily a timeline. We just want to make sure that we get some projects done before spring comes. So the process and kitchen is one of them. Siding and lean-tos on the exterior is another one. We're going to get started and we're going to probably start, I think Mark was talking about starting right here at the entrance and going all the way around. Okay, it is all put up. All the green board, all the way around. Some of it maybe not my best installation, but I know of somebody who's really good at mud work, so she can fix all my mistakes. <laughs> not bad though. This is up. I need to get the door replaced. Changed our mind on which kind of door we were gonna put there, so. I'm gonna take that back in the morning and get the new door to put in. And Ola is gonna go ahead and start doing mud and tape as soon as she can. All right, so Mark got all the drywall uh, put up. Right now I'm going through with my little razor knife and I'm creating a V channel for some of the butt joints that are too close together. So when I mud and tape, that tape is accepted into the, um, into the gap. Everest is sinking in any screws that need to be sunken in. So like if they just need to go just a little bit, pulling the paper just a little bit so I can uh, mud over that. And then anything that is blown out. So for example, if the sheetrock got damaged in the process, I need to cut it out so I could hot mud it and create a smooth process, like smooth wall. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're up to. And we're hoping to get the first layer of mud and tape done today. So I'm gonna teach Everest and hopefully he picks it right up and it's not a problem and we just go. All right, I'm not sure if we're who's gonna get done faster, but Everest is supposed to go through all the screws and I'm making him do it all over again because both of our attention span is really lacking right now. Okay, we got the remote. Got, got, 
got the room all cleaned up. Ever seems to go through all the screws just one last time to make sure we got them all sunken in properly. I got all the busted sheetrock pulled away. I had my V cuts and some tight spaces. <laughs> And we're gonna go ahead and start hot mudding. Hot mudding is probably my favorite process because it takes this ugly wall and actually puts it together um, where I patch up the, the broken sheetrock. I take care of my boxes. Are you in there calling my walls ugly? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and filling in really huge gaps where maybe the sheetrock doesn't align properly or anything like that. So I'm doing, that's what I'm going to do right now. And then after that, we'll go ahead and start letting it dry and then we'll start mudding and taping. Okay, so I got all the hot mud done. It's now needing to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my uh, taping mud and I'm going to make it just slightly wetter. Not too wet, not too like putty, but just a little bit wetter so I can get some taping done. I'm kind of slow at it, so I'm going to probably start the sailing because that doesn't have as much hot mud on it and I'll just get all the seams and by the time I'm done doing the sealing, I'm sure the other seams will be ready for me. I ain't never felt a kind of love like this before you took all the worries from my mind Darling, please forgive me if I say a little more I can't look away from those brown eyes And if we settle down, we don't have to settle down Please don't be afraid of all the things that could go wrong So restless in your sleep No, Mark put the third layer on the taping that I've done and right now I'm going to focus on just getting it sanded and then I'm going to go ahead and put another finishing coat on. Um, it actually looks pretty good. He's like, when you go in there, don't critique it. And I'm like, okay, I did anyway. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get it sanded and I'm going to go ahead and put, I think the fourth layer and make sure that's going and we'll go from there. Okay, so I am done sanding. 
Now I'm going to mix my mud and put the third coat on. No, fourth coat now. Um, I won't be back in this room for 48 hours, so it's gonna give it plenty of time to dry. And then hopefully at that point, we just do a touch up. I do kind of want to clean up a little bit, uh, mostly because I feel like if it's not clean, I'll pick it up on my knife somehow, I don't know. And then I'll have a little traveler and then it just gives me more work. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit before I get started. Okay, so I'm all out of mud. So I'm gonna have to go into town and get some more mud. However, I feel like I'm about halfway there. We are gonna be doing a smooth wall finish on this. So hopefully this is my last coat and everything kind of levels out and we can go ahead and do a small uh, smooth wall finish after that. And then it's game on. Paint and things and appliances and kitchen. So. We kind of have a design and plan, but it's not finalized. We just know where our bottom cabinets are going, where our sink is going, our water heater's going, our fridge is going, and our stove's going. And as of right now, that's what we got kind of figured out. The top cabinets or the top maybe shelves, we kind of are still in the process of designing it and seeing what we actually want. So. That's still in the work in progress. However, we've got to get through this before we really finalize anything. Okay, I'm gonna go get some more mud and get back to work. Last night after working, I only worked until about three o'clock or so. I got back and I put a final um, mud on top of all the seams. So today I'm just gonna go ahead and sand it. We're gonna see if there's any fixing to do. And if there is, we'll fix it. If not, we're gonna go straight to stamping the ceiling and getting primer on. Um, but before that, we probably need to build the window casing, so we gotta get that going, and then seeing if I need a mud anymore. But this was, me and Margaret were just talking how quickly this went. Um, literally, it's been a week, and that's from just starting to put the sheetrock up to this point. So we moved really quickly on this project, and it's kinda nice to see that. We'll get the floor cleaned up and then we have the hot water. All the stuff already is here. We'll attach the hot water and then we're going to start building this kitchen, which is exciting because we have chickens we need to process. We have a pig to process. We have a couple of goats to process and our uh, milking cow. Uh, we're going to be pulling the calves off here pretty soon, which means that she'll have plenty of milk to make cheese. So we got a lot of things to do and um, we want to have this in, in the works during the winter time so we can start building up our, uh, our protein source. But yeah, so this is, this is going pretty good. So I'm going to sand and see where we're at and um, we'll kind of go from there.
So we're much closer now. I've got the window casings stained, installed, and they're all set where they need to be. Um, I also had to do a little bit of float um, with the hot mud around the casing. I find that when I build these casings out, there's always a little bit of discrepancy in the drywall. Sometimes it's, you know, as small as a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch and it's not too big of a deal. But that makes it difficult to put the trim on and have it sit nicely because then the trim wants to rock back or protrudes. So I end up finding the closest to flush thickness when I build the window casings and then I build them to that size. And then like I've done here, I come around the top and the sides. Anywhere that the wall is deeper back than the front of the casing. And I build that out with hot mud to get it to the right, like, flatness, I guess. And then I'll come back over that with a little bit of finish mud. I'll give it a light sanding and finish mud. I'm not very good with the hot mud to getting it really nicely finished. So I find it does best if I get it on there where it looks pretty dang good and pretty close and leave it alone because the more I mess with it, the more I mess it up. So we'll get that on there to get anything built out and then I'll come back over it with some finished mud just to get it fanned out and finished out nicely and then sand everything down. And then when I go to put the trim on, it just sits nicely against the wall and I don't have any problems with it wanting to rock into in or out of position. And that helps my corner stay tighter. Okay, well obviously, Ola's a lot better at this than I am. But this should finish it out. I got the float coat taken over top of the hot mud. We're gonna lightly sand all the skim coat throughout the walls and just barely touch the ceiling just to knock off any sharps and any rolled edges that came from knocking down the texture. Once we have that all done, We'll do a final cleanup, scrape the floor one last time, vacuum the edges, make sure there's no dust anywhere. We'll mask the window casings, and then we will go to priming. Once I get it all primed, I will install the trim around both the windows and the door, hoping, fingers crossed, we can prime and paint tonight.
But that room's a wrap. All the paint's done, all the trim's done. Now it's moving on to finishings and getting this thing ready to use. The layout plan is to have next to the door here, um, the fridge, and then we'll have this corner here kind of be the mechanicals area. So we'll have the fridge here, a water softener, and then on the wall next to the window here, we'll have a tankless water heater. And then from there, this way, we continue with double deep basin sinks, dishwasher, a custom corner cabinet, another small, like, I think it's a 24 inch cabinet. I don't remember. Another small cabinet, slide in range, and a 36 inch cabinet. And then on this wall here with the window, we will have a, an island that will be, of course, custom built, but it will be mobile. It'll roll on wheels and be able to pull out from the wall as a uh, large work around work surface. It will be butcher block top, so that if we're doing a lot of produce and canning, we can bring it to there. We can have countertops for staging, stove for cooking, and the big butcher block top to be able to do all the cutting and processing and, and sorting of the vegetables. If we're processing animals, same thing. We can do all the butchering right on that top and do all the sorting and then have other countertop space for doing the packaging and preparing of the meat in various forms. The paint is the same exterior white that we did inside the shop. So it's a semi-gloss or a satin, I don't remember which. Satin, exterior satin. And since it's exterior, it's waterproof. So that'll give it a nice space in here that'll make it easy to wipe down and sanitize in between any project to make sure we've got a good clean process for processing animals, cheese, produce, etc. This is ready to go. Start putting in some of these other appliances and get started on the cabinets.